Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about whether Ken Griffin is on white collar house arrest. Now, you may need your tinfoil hats a little bit for this one, so I also want to talk about why the shorts are no longer in control for AMC. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, is Ken Griffin under white collar house arrest? So a couple of things have happened recently that I thought someone might put together and get a different viewpoint from the spun narrative. Firstly, Ken's plane hasn't been flying. There's been some posts that regularly track Ken Griffin's flights where he goes to different countries across Europe and across America to kind of speculate what he's actually doing. But recently, he hasn't been flying at all. On top of that, there's an active Department of Justice investigation that includes GameStop and AMC. Now, some of the firms that are being investigated for aggressive or abusive short selling have previously came out with short reports on AMC and GameStop. And finally, on top of that, Biden's head of security in the Secret Service is now spending a lot of close time with Ken Griffin. So I wonder if he was actually hired by Ken or appointed to look after Ken. Could it be that the Secret Service is investigating crimes that may have put the US at risk, one of their core roles? Could it be that Ken has been asked not to leave the area in the near future and is now being babysat to make sure that he doesn't do a runner? And is this why Citadel brought out new terms saying that clients can't remove more than 6.25% of their holdings per quarter without facing a large fine because of the reputational impact if something were to happen to Ken and his firm? And he says, obviously, it's probably nothing, but it's some tinfoil hatting on my part. But anything seems possible at this moment right now. If you haven't already, be sure to sign up to Moomoo. You can currently get five free stocks valued up to $17,500 when you sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below. And as a special Christmas bonus, if you sign up this month, you can be in with the chance of winning an iPhone 13 Pro and a number of other goodies every single day this month until Christmas. You get the first free stock when you open your brokerage account. You get your second free stock when you deposit any amount, even if it's only a single dollar. You'll be entered into the Christmas giveaway if you deposit $100. And if you can deposit $2,000, then you'll get the final three remaining free shares. So guys, be sure to sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below for those free shares and potentially an iPhone 13 Pro as well. Now, I also wanted to talk about why and how Ken Griffin, Citadel and the remaining shorts have lost control and another short squeeze is imminent. Says this play is not necessarily just about squeezing the shorts, it's all about putting them out of business for malpractice and manipulation. This article provides evidence, one of many, in support of that argument based on available data. Retail investors should know that shorts are not in control of the stock and its price. The squeeze has yet a task to complete to punish and possibly blow up a few short institutions who have engaged in illegal or rather seemingly legal dilution and naked shorting of AMC and other stocks such as GameStop. Obviously, some short funds like Citadel and other institutions have been utilizing their market maker affiliates to dilute certain stocks using an infinity short loop, which will be discussed later. But first, the post talks about the following chart showing the top institutional holders of AMC and how their ownership has changed over the last year. Obviously, it shows a significant increase in institutional involvement in AMC that indicates no sign of retreat. You may wonder, why? So firstly, from this chart, I want to point out what I see. So between January, which is their quarter four filings, and April, which is the end of their quarter one filings, institutions increased their position in AMC drastically. Maybe they took a position in AMC at the very start of January in advance of that first run up. But at the end of quarter one, they were still holding their AMC position, meaning that they knew the potential of AMC was not over. And then between April, which is their quarter one filings, and July, which is their quarter two filings, institutions did not really increase their position too drastically. They let AMC run up in June, they didn't sell off their position, but they didn't really add to it too dramatically. 
But then between July, which is the end of their quarter two filings, and September, which is the end of their quarter three filings, again, some of the institutions or most of the institutions added drastically to their long positions once again. Now, interestingly, at the end of quarter two, depending on when they had their 13Fs drawn up, the price of AMC was between $40 and $60 per share. But at the end of quarter three, at the end of September, AMC was in this region between $35 and $40 a share. And therefore, they had lost money on AMC. But they didn't sell off their shares thinking that AMC squeeze was done. Instead, they added more. Now, obviously, right now, the quarter four filings haven't yet been made because the fourth quarter isn't yet over. It will be interesting to see whether the institutions are still adding to their AMC position because they know AMC can run up once again. But now back to the post. It starts by saying the major institutional holders you see on this chart are the primary force behind the AMC price action and a source of conviction among retail investors. They then compared the net worth of these longs, such as BlackRock with a net worth of $7.4 trillion and Vanguard also with a net worth of $7.4 trillion to the shorts like Citadel who have a net worth of $384 billion and Virtue with a net worth of only $10.4 billion. And it says looking at the net worth of these institutions, it's no secret that the AMC shorts may lose everything because they're the smaller fries in this situation. and for good reason. They're taking advantage of a market with certain loopholes that may or may not be illegal by nature, but they are certainly illegal if used in certain ways. And obviously the SEC has shown no interest in dealing with these issues and is more interested in preserving the status quo or maintaining an orderly market. But on the flip side, the SEC can't issue criminal punishments, only issue civil fines. And therefore, maybe they've referred the case to the Department of Justice. It says ultimately, it seems like this fight is not necessarily a fight between retail and Citadel, but retail is the biggest asset of AMC, and they're one of the reasons the institutional interest in the stock has increased dramatically. But it says it's now very much an institutional battle, and all signs point to yet another squeeze or another run-up in the chain of infinite squeezes, just like the one Tesla experienced earlier this year, and I guess at the back of last year. The goal is set. As the chart above shows, these institutions started buying AMC at the end of 2020 and primarily ignored the January events and continued to buy. And obviously these long institutions did not stop buying in April, waiting for one squeeze to happen. As the chart shows, they were not interested in selling when the price hit $72. In fact, as the chart below shows, they continued to buy after the June run-up. And as these institutions were still adding to their positions in quarter three and are likely still to this day adding to their positions in quarter four, clearly they believe that AMC will run up once again. Now, interestingly, you may remember a few videos back that I spoke about the web API on Webull showing that Webull alone hold 130 million shares of AMC. Now, obviously, this is a very, very large amount of shares to be held by one single broker, and especially a broker that is disliked for using payment for order flow. Obviously, there'd be many more times this amount of shares held by Fidelity and other platforms like Moomoo or TD Ameritrade, and also held by institutions on top of that as well. And Log the Float have said as a project, as the only eight powered data source, they intend to analyze the 8,000 plus submitted screenshots of AMC retail shares in order to identify the percentage of shares submitted from Webull and compare that to the percentage of shares submitted from other brokers like Fidelity. And then they plan to get a good estimate of the percentage of non Webull and non Robinhood shares to be added to the 130 million shares. For example, if there's 10 times the amount of people submitting screenshots through Fidelity compared to the people submitting screenshots through Webull, we could see there's around 1.3 billion shares held on Fidelity and 130 million shares held on Webull. So I am very interested not only to see the quarter four institutional buying, but also to see just how many submissions they've had through other brokers like Fidelity and TD Ameritrade, 
compared to the brokers and the submissions that they've had, sorry, from brokers like Weeble. On top of this, I wanted to touch on something very, very interesting and unusual from Adam Aaron. Obviously the other day, Adam Aaron tweeted about Regal and Cineworld and the fine they have to pay for the failed merger. He said it will be appealed, but anything distracting or destabilizing our biggest competitor brings opportunity to AMC. Now this tweet has a very different tone to Adam Aaron's usual tweets. Typically, Adam Aaron is very friendly and excited, bringing new things to us, the retail investors, and also to us, his customers. He often supports many charities and does a lot of charitable work and has recently been seen actually going to cinema venues to meet the regular everyday folk like you and I. But the attitude of this post or this tweet is very, very different. Here he seems to be attacking a different company rather than being so very friendly. And not only that, but he's posted a second tweet about his first tweet, saying it's important for those who care about AMC, see and reflect on this consequential news that came out yesterday from Canada. And he said again that it potentially creates significant opportunity in many ways, for AMC. Now I'm really interested and really confused as to why the tone of this tweet was so different from usual and why he felt the need to follow it up with a second tweet. I'm really interested to see what kind of potential significant opportunity this presents and whether it presents it for AMC or for the retail shareholders. Maybe Adam Aaron is suggesting there's significant opportunity for AMC shareholders in the market right now if Adam Aaron knows that AMC is going to run up in the not too distant future. Again, though, maybe I'm looking way too deep into it and maybe it's just a regular Adam Aaron tweet. However, I do think a brilliant idea is to flood every single social media platform with photos of full AMC theatres at the Spider-Man No Way Home premiere. You may remember back at the start of Charles Gasparino when he retweeted a seemingly empty AMC cinema suggesting that cinemas were dying. Obviously, we did our research and found out that this photo was taken many hours before the showing of her film was actually due to start and therefore it was a ruse and a setup in order to try and paint AMC in a worse light than what's really actually going on. Maybe they'll try and do this again and post photos of seemingly empty AMC cinemas and say that the new Spider-Man was a flunk film and that Adam Aaron doesn't know what he's doing. And therefore, I think to prevent against this, when we go to the cinema to see the new Spider-Man film, we should take tons of photos of fully packed out AMC cinemas and post them over social media for those shorts to see. Just to remind them that movies and theatres and most importantly AMC are not a dead cat. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think about Ken Griffin being on house arrest and what you think of the shorts having lost control over AMC. And if you want to pick up some cool AMC related merch like my Space 8 hoodie here or my To The Moon t-shirt, be sure to check out the link down in the description below to my store. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.